Hi, David here again, One Up Gaming, episode 362 of the One Up Gaming podcast. So please, no, nope, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment in t shirt for a chance to win a One Up Gaming t shirt, and follow us, leave a comment saying Evercated for a chance to win the Interplay Collection 2 cartridge for the Evercade machine. So, t-shirt, Evercade, leave comments, thank you, and we'll move into, I'm confused now, I thought I'd upside down, uh, we'll move into this week's news, so, oh, me back. Do you know when you need to crack your neck and it just won't crack? That's where I am at the minute with my neck. It's just there to annoy me at the moment. So, yeah, I don't know what I'm on about. Sorry. So, we'll go straight into Red Dead Redemption fans protest uh, the release they're calling overpriced, lacking new features. This is not the remake fans were hoping for. Red Dead Redemption's newly announced PlayStation and Nintendo Switch release could have been a cause for celebration among the game's dedicated community, but instead fans are up in arms over today's news. This morning Rockstar revealed that 2010's Red Dead Redemption is on it and its Undead Nightmare expansion are coming to PS4 and Nintendo Switch on August 17th with physical editions to follow on October the 13th. Rockstar is calling the port a conversion rather than a remaster or remake and the company is charging $50 for this iteration of the game. So someone on Twitter put, Red Dead Redemption what we wanted, remake the map in Red Dead Redemption 2 already, 60 frames a second, dual sense features, only current gen version, PS5, Xbox series, good PC. What an um, ultimate version. What we got, 30 frames a second port, no 60 frames per second, no remake no, or remaster, Rockstar not caring. Um, so someone also pointed out that Red Dead Redemption won't be coming out on the Xbox because it's backwards compatible and it also runs at 4K on the Series X and 2K on the Series S. Um, so yeah, so the original one's $30 for the Xbox, but because it's backwards compatible, it upgrades it up to the 4K release, so you're getting it cheaper, and it's just better, but that's because Sony don't want to do the backwards compatibility features, um, and that's on Sony, that's not Rockstar, but I do believe that sixty or $50 for the game is going a little bit steep. It's I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a bloody good game, but it's just weird. So following on from that bit of news, Take-Two CEO says the next-gen backward compatibility is a benefit but not a must-have. Uh, with recent rumours swirling around the potential for a successor to the Nintendo Switch, Many fans and developers have been concerned about a possible lack of backward compatibility for such a console and while the verdict hasn't quite been delivered on whether or not a Switch 2 would have the feature, one major publisher doesn't seem too concerned about the prospect. Uh, so that's Take-Two Interactive. Speaking to IGN ahead of the company's quarter one earnings announcement, Take-Two CEO Strauss Zenik, Zelnik stated that he felt backwards compatibility was a benefit for cus to customers. However, they added that he'd be surprised if platforms didn't offer that with an upgrade that is a sort of mid-cycle. However, I'm not certain it's a must-have. Uh, his response was a curious one. My initial question had mentioned upcoming rumoured console upgrades, specifically rumours of a PS5 Pro, but I'd had horned in on asking about Nintendo Switch successor specifically. So I followed that up by asking if he considered the Nintendo Switch to be a mid-cycle and he said it remains to be seen. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. 
What do you guys think? Is it weird? Is it good? We don't know, do we? <laughs> so we'll go to the next bit of news. And again, I forgot to mention, I'll apologise. I'm wearing this tox to come straight in from work. I've got to get ready, get sorted, and then I've got to get to bed because I'm back at work tomorrow. Um, so if you can't see me, I apologise. I'll be a floating head. I'm not sure if this is green or if it's grey. I don't know. Um, please leave that comment in the, in the comments because I'd like to know what colour I'm wearing. So we've got the next bit of news and that is how yeah, you want those games right briefly became a viral sensation. Uh, there's this multi... Uh, no, nope, there's this mobile game ad I see all the time on social media. It shows the number of vials filled with different coloured liquid. The goal is to combine matching colours until all vials have one single solid colour contained in them. If you've seen this before, one version of it looks like this. Which, yes, I've played that before. And again, being colour blind, it's not the best game to play. I love watching this ad, it's extremely soothing, but if you look through a mobile storefront to play the actual game, it uh, almost all versions either full of ads or mon monetization. They're agonizing to play, they're outright scams, and it's not the only game like this. Color Water Sort, for lack of a better title, is part of a larger genre of mobile games with similar premises. It has catchy ads. Uh, plays fumbling very easy puzzles that the viewer immediately thinks they could solve but when you go to play the game it's heavily monetized full of ads or a different game entirely other versions include a man trapped in a weird tomb puzzle trying to get to treasure and a game about choosing the correct path through the series of battles blah, 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 blah. I don't know I don't know what's going on about um, it's yeah. Uh, so is this going on about how someone made a game basically like all those other games all mixed together? I don't know. I didn't read it. I got bored. Help. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, um, yeah, leave comments. Do you play mobile games? I don't really. I have that little Amber Neck handheld thing, which itches scratches my itch for that sort of thing but let me know so next up news that no one's surprised about call of duty modern warfare 3 finally has a release date so call of duty modern warfare 3 finally has its release date november 10th 2023 confirmation comes from a teaser trailer which includes snippets of dialogue from the series star captain price and shadow company boss philip graves who said never bury your enemies alive Guess Grave survived the events of Modern Warfare 2 then? I no idea. Uh, the ultimate threat awaits, reads the brief description trailer. Not much else is known, blah 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 blah. It's confirmed that it'll be on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. So I'll just skip, stop that there. Oh, I've got hiccups now. So what do you guys think? Do you interest in the Call of Duty games. I think they've had five too many and it's just getting a bit stale now. Uh, let me let us know. Leave comments. Tell us all the juicy juicy bits. So we'll go with the next bit of news. Suicide Squad director says James Gunn confident the AIA cut will release eventually. Suicide Squad director David Ayer has indicated James Gunn is on board with releasing the Ayer cut at some point, though he is currently busy working on the DCU's Chapter 1 Gods and Monsters. Ayer reignited discussions about the director's cut of the widely panned Suicide Squad after posting an image on Jared Leto after posting an image of Jared Leto's Joker from the 2016 film on X formerly known as Twitter. Photo didn't include a caption, prompting some fans to question why he shared it. Aya responded by giving a TED talk on the situation as it currently stands. <sighs> That's the picture I'd have a guess. Uh, what do you guys think? 
Do you guys want to see this? I think it's another marketing wave to try and get more money for the same movie. Um, but we will see in the future to see what happens. Leave comments, let us know, we'll discuss this, we'll talk about it. Uh, we'll move on to the next bit of news. And the next bit of news is Mortal Kombat 1 adds Reptile Ashra and Havoc as new fighters at EVO 2023. At EVO 2023, Neverrealm revealed Reptile the, the, joining the roster of Mortal Kombat 1 and that Serena will be the new cam Cameo? Camo? Cameo? Yeah, Cameo. So who's Serena? I don't know. The news was announced alongside a brand new Mortal Kombat 1 gameplay trailer that showed the characters in action. Also gave another glimpse at the story players will experience when the latest entry in the leg legendary fran fighting franchise is released on September 19th. Uh, oh god. It's gone on about all these players and characters and likes of Gears, Sector, I've heard of Sector, I've heard of Cyrax, I've heard of Frost and Scorpion of course. Uh, remind you that also from DLC will be Homelander, Peacemaker, Omni-Man will also be joining the roster which is pretty cool. Um, what do you guys think? Are you excited for Mortal Kombat 1? Or do you think it's just a weird, weird one? Um, oh, my neck. I don't know why I just did that. So we'll go to the next bit of news. And that is... Tekken 8 director confirms game won't have Denuvo. Now, I don't know who Denuvo is. Tre um, Trekken. Tekken 8. But it's not Tekken 8, is it? It's like Tekken. Tekken 8. But I'll just say Tekken 8. Uh, Katsurisho uh, Harada. I'm so sorry. Confirmed that the next main instalment in the Tekken franchise will not include... The anti pass privacy software Denuvo. Aha! It's not a playable character, I do apologise. In the post on social media platform X, uh, Harada confirmed that the development team will not include Denuvo or anything else into the Tekken 8. Harada made the statement after a now deleted post pointed out that Tekken 8's end user license agreement on Steam mentions Denuvo is being used under the third party software category. Uh, it's probably a simple copy and paste of Tekken 8. Anyway, I have no plans to introduce Denuvo or anything else in Tekken 8, so stop your tedious allergic reactions to every single thing and sit quietly the hell down. Oh, God, I love that. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think? Um, is it good that they've said they're not including anything? Because now he's said they're not including out if it ships and people find things in it. That could be quite a big backlash. But we'll find out what we they will let us know in the coming months. What do you guys think? Leave comments and let me know. So next up. EA closing servers for Crisis 3, Dead Space 2 and Dante's Inferno. I love Dante's Inferno. Uh, EA has announced its next wave of games to lose their servers. As noted on EA Online EA's online servers services shutdown support page. Bloody hell, that's a big of a mouthful. The publisher plans to close the service for Crisis 3, Dante's Inferno and Dead Space 2 before the end of the year. Crisis 3 will shut down its servers on September 7th, Dante's Inferno and Dead Space 2 servers on December the 8th. EA released, EA released a remaster of Crisis 3 back in 2021 along with Crisis and Crisis 2. Unfortunately, each game in the Crisis and Remastered trilogy is single player only with no multi online multiplayer component. Though Crytek did announce back in 2022 that he was working on Crisis 4. News on the next installment in this other, in this otherwise dormant franchise has been seldom. These are the latest th last latest three games EA shuttering support server support for in 2023. As early this year, the company announced it was closing service for Kingdom of, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, Shadows of the Damned, Syndicate, I loved Syndicate as well, and Warp. Well, last October they announced the uh, Mirror's Edge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it's annoying that they're doing this? Can't they just give um, 
the games to like a third party people to release and then they can see if they want to keep them up or not um, and not charge things that are going on but we'll see we will see what happens um, it's uh, unfortunately the times that we are living in so next up Street Fighter 6 fans hit out at the $15 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles DLC costumes Capcom has come under fire for the high cost of Street Fighter 6's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles DLC each DLC costume costs 750 fighter coins roughly $15 as is the video game premium currency where you can't buy 750 coins exactly you need to buy 610 for 12 then an extra 250 for 5 if you want all four costumes Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo you need 3000 fighter coins the cheapest way to buy that amount is to fork out $50 for 2750 and then $5 for 250 it's worth noting these total costumes are just that they are not new playable characters but avatar costumes to use in single player world tour mode, lobbies and in avatar battles and not available in standard competitive multiplayer. The recently released brand new DLC character Rashid which costs 350 fighter coins is cheaper than a single turtles costume. While the $15 price tag for the turtles costume is in line with skins and other live service games, the Street Fighter 6 community has collectively hit out at Capcom for what they feel are overpriced pieces of DLC. I'd like to see how these characters look in the game. Um, do we have how they look in the actual game? Come on. No, it doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. So, what do you guys think? Is this overpriced twaddle? And it's just annoying that companies think they can get away with this kind of thing? Or is this shut up, take your medicine, and just accept what it is? So we'll have the last bit of news, and that, my friends, is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse digital release makes one version of the film canon. Two different cuts of the film played in theatres, which I didn't know. The digital release of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has confirmed which version of the film should be regarded as canon after two different cuts made their way into theatres. Shortly after the second chapter of the Spider-Verse saga hit digital storefronts, Fans who downloaded the movie put out a PSA for which version of the film featured on the release after Cinemagoy spotted minor differences in the dialogue and animations across two different cuts that rolled out in theatres in June. Games Radar, Games Radar picked up on the tweets circulating on X confirming which version is the real deal. One scene featuring Ming... Ming oh god... Yeah, the guy who's a vampire, Aka, aka Aka, Aka, Spider-Man 2099, and his holographic companion Leia ends with her taking a selfie with a bunny filter instead of pointing her finger, making that the official version. I have no idea what's going on. The digital release also features Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, making a remark about trapping Miles in his well-defined. Uh, Rather than call it a sleeper hold. I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, the bloody movie was good. We don't need to know anymore. The movie was good and I can't wait for part two. Well, the third of the trilogy. I can't wait for the third one. It was an amazing movie. Really good. So we'll have a quick break and come back with the UK Top 40. So back a couple of seconds. Soon-ish. Maybe. Maybe. 